chapter four. We're now going to work on section four two, which is reflections. So let's just do a quick review of graphing some lines that we're going to need. So when we see an equation where it just says y equals one, no x. If there's no x in the problem, instantly we know it's a horizontal line, which means we'd come up one, and then we would graph a horizontal line along that. Same thing on the second one here, y equals negative three, there's no x in the problem. So therefore we know it is a horizontal line, a slope of zero, and we know it would be crossing the y axis. There's a typo there, sorry about that. It'd be crossing the y axis at a negative three. Okay, let's try a couple other ones here. Graphing lines. Um, again, we have x equals 2. Notice there is no y in the problem. That's going to imply that we have a vertical line. So we're going to come over here to 2. I'm just going to draw my vertical line in. And then x equals negative 4. Again, no y. It's going to be a vertical line. We're going to cross the x-axis at negative 4. So that's what those two lines look like. So we're going to be using those because what a reflection is, is, is a, a type of transformation that creates a mirror image over a line of reflection. Okay. Now, the key to this is corresponding points. So the pre-image to the image of each point is equidistant from the line of reflection. So what that means is, is if I have a line of reflection here and I put A over on this point, this line to the line of reflection, to this line to the image is going to be equidistant. Now, the other thing that we need to know that we need to kind of think about is the shape itself is going to be the same, meaning there is no size difference. So the shape is going to stay the same. The orientation, though, is going to change. Okay? It is going to change. It is not going to be the same because of this idea of equidistance. If we look down here on this little graph, if I put B back here behind A, right? That means this segment would have to be equidistant to this segment to get us to B prime. Now notice, on the left-hand side, it goes in order from left to right, B to A. On the right-hand side, it goes in order from left to right, A, to A prime to B prime. So the orientation of the shape is not going to be the same because those points that are closest to the line of reflection are going to remain closest to the line of reflection. So it flips that image over that line of reflection. All right, so let's try this thing. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off graphing our point. So negative 5, 6. Here is A. B is at negative 5, 4. C is at negative 2, 4 and D is at negative 2, 6. Okay, and they want us to reflect this over the line X equals 1. Remember, no Y in the problem. That means that it is going to be a vertical line through the value of X equals 1. Now, what we then know is that if we count C to the line of reflection, there's three. So now I go on to the other side, three, and that's where I'm going to find the image C prime. Same thing with D, one, two, three. So one, two, three. Remember, they have to be equidistant, the pre-image to the line of reflection, as the distance from the line of reflection to the image. A then would be 6, so another 3 past D, and B prime would be another 3 past C prime. And there is our 
image after the reflection. Now, if we take a look at these, a prime that is now at 7, 6, B prime that is now at 7, 4, C prime that is located at 4, 4, and D prime that is located at 4, 6. Now, something just to point out to you, if you notice, those Y values did not change. Now, when you stop to think, why is that? Well, because we reflected left to right. So that is only going to have an impact on the X values. So the X values are changing, but we did not change anything top to bottom. Um, so therefore, the Y values are not going to change. Okay, let's move on to the second one here. So we're going to start off again. Um, we're going to start off with our triangle. We're going to go negative 2, negative 4. Here is our A. We've got B at negative 4, negative 1. And negative 2, 1. Here's C. Okay, so there's our triangle. This time, we are going to reflect it through the line y equals negative 3, which is a horizontal line. There. Now, so what that means is, is anything below that line is going to reflect above it. Anything above the line is going to reflect above, below it, and it will be equal distance. So if I start here at b, I have 2 above it. So now I'm going to go 2 below it, and there's going to be B prime. A is 1 below it, so I'm going to go 1 above it, and that will be A prime. C is 1, 2, 3, 4 above it, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 below it, and that will be C prime. And there is our image. So if we take a look at these then, so let's kind of go through and write our ordered pairs. So A prime, that is at negative 2, negative 2. B prime, that is at um, negative 4, negative 5. And C prime, that is located at negative 2, negative 7. Now, again, just something to point out, if you notice... This time, my x values are not changing because I am flipping vertically, up top to bottom. So therefore, the only thing that's being having an impact on it is the y values then. Okay, so now let's go a little more challenging. We're, gonna, we're going to graph the line y equals x and use that as our line of reflection. So what I'm going to start off with again is I'm going to graph my point. Negative 2, 3, negative 6, 3, and negative 6, negative 3. So here's C, here's B, here's A. So there's my triangle. And now what I want to reflect it over is I want to reflect it over this line, which has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. So I'm going to start here at 0, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1. So if I look at that line, so here's my line of reflection. Now, remember we talked um, at the end of the last chapter about the shortest distance between a point and a line is the perpendicular. Well, we're going to tie all that in here because what we want is the shortest, the perpendicular, from our point to our line of reflection. So when I look at this, I see that C is 1 and a half, and this would be the perpendicular because it would be a slope of negative 1, is 1 and a half to the line. So if I keep going, C prime would be located here. A is 1 two and a half. So half, one, two. Here is going to be A prime. And B prime is one, two, three, four and a half. Half, one, two, three, 
4. So B prime is going to be located here. Now, I want to take a look at these ordered pairs and see if we notice any kind of a pattern. So A prime, when we look at that one, went to 3, negative 2. B prime, when we looked at that one, is at 3, negative 6. And C prime, when we did that one, is at negative 3, negative 6. Now, if you notice here, these just switched. So the rule is, when we are reflecting over the line y equals x, what the rule is going to say is we're going to start off with x, y, and we get to end up with y comma x. So the x and a y just switch positions in the ordered pair. Okay, so now let's try the next one now. So now what we're going to do is, again, we're going to start off with our points. So 6, 4, and that is A. We have B at 6, negative 2. We have C at negative 1, 1. And we have D at 0, negative 3. And we have our line here. We have our quadrilateral that we're now going to reflect. This time, we want to reflect that over the line y equals negative x. So that would be a negative 1 slope with a y-intercept of 0. So I start there. I'm going to go up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1, like that. And then I'm just going to take, and I'm going to come down through there, get my line of reflection. Kind of like that. So now when we look at it, let's start with C. C would probably be the easiest. It's on that line of reflection. So C and C prime would be actually the exact same value, negative 1, 1. So now let's find the others. So D here, if I go to the perpendicular, I'm 1 and a half to it, half 1. So D prime would be here, which is located at... 3, 0. B prime, I'm at 1, 2, 1, 2. So B prime is going to be down here. And that one is at 2, negative 6. And A prime, when we look at that, that is going to end up at, as we come down, we're going to end up at negative 4. negative 6. And we could draw that in. And there's our reflected image. Now if you notice, something happened here as well. The x and the y switch, but they also change their sign. So the rule for this when we are reflecting over the line y equals negative x, our rule would be xy to negative y negative x, meaning you're going to flip their positions and change their signs. Okay, so those are our rules for those two special ones. So the last thing we're going to do is talk about line of symmetry. We've learned about line of symmetry before. It is just simply where the line makes the figure its own reflection. In other words, it can fold onto itself. So if we kind of look at these four shapes, uh, this first one here, we would have two lines of symmetry, um, one going vertically right down through the middle and one going horizontally. This second one at this X, we have the vertical one. We have the horizontal one, but we also have the ones splitting through the middle there. So that one has four lines of symmetry. On our hexagon here, we have the vertical, we have the horizontal, we have corner to corner, but also since it is a regular, we would also have the two pieces there in the middle, which would give us six of them. And then here on this cross, we would have the vertical, horizontal, and then we would have our two diagonals as well, which would give us four lines of symmetry. 
Okay, so that's just a quick review of line of symmetry with that as well. Now, with that being said, that is how we do a reflection. In order to do a reflection, remember, you have to have a line of reflection. Okay, so there is reflection.